Now you got to watch the S and G trades. And if you are making an S and G trade, just make sure you document it as an S and G trade. FOMO is the same thing. So I'll write S and G, I'll write FOMO. S and G is a trade that you think, ah, it's just a little bit of risk. What the hell? I'm just going to take a little bit of risk. If it works, great. It might pay off. Okay. If it doesn't work, I don't care. I'll just sweep it under the rug. You know, kind of like what I did with, with Tesla yesterday, except that it, it became a lot bigger than that. Then I'm stuck in front of that screen and I've got two hours of work ahead of me to do. All was started as somewhat of a, of a goad slash S and G type of trade. And it starts to kind of eat into my life. I had two hours of analysis ahead of me. My wife's expecting me home at, at a reasonable hour because I was cooking dinner, to start dinner, you know? And so a lot of, there's a lot more to it than just a trade in and of itself and, and kind of backing into something here, but it all goes back to all the lectures I've done about what's going on in your life and what's happening. And that's kind of a small thing. Like, I'm, okay, I'm in a hurry. I shouldn't have taken a trade to begin with. Now I'm looking to get out as soon as possible as opposed to following some plan, which I didn't have to begin with. So just make sure you document what you're doing. And when you see something like FOMO or s &G or something like that next to a trade, as soon as you put it on and then it goes awry, then you're like, okay, well, that's something that I shouldn't be doing. And I have one client in particular that I get goaded a lot from because <laughs> he's he's good at what he does, but he plays a different game. It's it, That's not me again, you know? And so I'll write his name down and put G-O-A-D after it. So I know that I got into that trade. And one thing I'm going to tell you to do, spoiler alert, in a few minutes is to make sure you you review all this stuff. And and I'd be willing to bet if I went in and, and documented every one of those and put them in a spreadsheet or something with a, with a column, I'd be willing to bet that overall those trades lose money. Now he seems to make money in it, and my FOMO was he's gonna he's gonna text me 20 minutes later and he's up 70 points, and lo and behold he did. <laughs> you know, now I don't know where he got out, so hopefully he was able to keep some of that. One of my biggest problems is the walk in the office trade, and I had an epiphany yesterday with this. So to those who haven't heard me talk about this before, the walk in the office trade is my my office is now attached to the house. It used to be in a separate house, but it's attached to the house via a porchway. So I physically have to leave the house into the cold <laughs> or hot, whatever it is, usually hot, and walk over here. And one thing that I found is I'll walk in and everything just looks great especially like an intraday stuff, right? And I'll end up firing off some trades. And then it took me a while to realize that the trades that I'm losing the most on are often those ones that I come in after leaving the office and coming back to the office. So I call it the walk of the office trade. So one of my commitment devices there, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about those in a few seconds, but one of my commitment devices there is I write W-I-T-O, when I get back in the office and what time it is, okay? And then I try to do that first before placing any trades. And if, I play, if I'm getting ready to place a trade right after I walk in the office, I'm like, wait a minute, Dave, is this a walk in the office trade? And for some reason it looks good. Now my epiphany yesterday that I alluded to was the, the hungry thing, right? So when do I leave the, lately it hasn't been much, right? But now I leave the office for breakfast, and I leave the office for lunch. So I come back from breakfast, feeling good, feeling happy, nice and full. And like the judges, you know, feeling good, right? And after lunch, same sort of thing. So I really have to watch those walk in the office trades. Now, if you're not sure what to do, write that down and make sure you phrase it as a question and I'm a big fan of questions and I've done presentation after presentation on the importance of asking questions figuring out what question to ask and what's the uh 
Keetering thing, what's his name? A problem well stated is a problem well solved. And that will come from asking questions. One thing that I'm guilty of sometimes is trading not to lose, or am I trading because I can win big, as opposed to trading to win big. And I'll give you an example. Let's say something is is about to break out or whatever, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna anticipate that breakout, and I'm gonna put in, I'm just gonna go ahead and get in. I'm putting a really, really, really tight stop just below the low, and it's not gonna cost me much. Well, usually, or many times I should say, that trade will get away from me and it ends up costing me more than I intended. And you gotta be really careful when you're trading not to lose. Now there's there's various forms of trading not to lose, if you try to trade S&P futures over the last couple of weeks and you're trying to risk five points, 10 points, 15 points, maybe 20 points, because that's all you want to risk on a trade, unless you've got that timing perfectly, you are probably going to lose on that trade. Now, along the same lines, have you fully adjusted to the market's volatility? So just get that share size way way down. I'm having one of my best weeks ever. And and I don't want to brag because Friday I got cream, like I said. And, I, and you know, I that's another one of my problems that you document. And when we get to another one of those, let's talk about a second. I do have a bad habit of losing money on Fridays, it it seems. I'm developing a pattern of that. Okay. Is it because I'm in a good mood or, or what you know what what's different? On a Friday, is the market more choppy on a Friday? I don't know. But I've been documenting that. I've been watching that. And maybe there are some procedures I need to put in place. Like maybe I need to go, <laughs> maybe I need to leave the office on Fridays. But every now and then I hit it out of the park. So I can't just completely quit. Now, some of the things we talked about last week dovetails into this week. And I want to, in upcoming webinars, I want to, elaborate on, on them quite a bit because, because I took a lot of notes in my morning page, which, which I'm going to beat the dead horse on one more time, or again, I should say. And I didn't cover, I maybe covered about a third of what I want to cover on this, so we'll come back to it. But I was talking about the pain of missing out on a trade, which is the reality versus the FOMO. And if you go in and watch last week's presentation, there's two different parts of your brain that are working. The, the part of you going into the trade is a certain part of your brain and the part of you in the tra trade is a different part of your brain. And have you ever like looked forward to something and you just get all excited about it, excited about it, excited about it, you finally get that thing or do that thing and it's not nearly as great as you thought it was. Well, that's because two different parts of your brain are working on that. And one is reality and one is perception. Anyway, the Pascal's wager is this is your life on Earth. That's in your that's your entire life right there. And for argument's sake, if God does exist, you end up with eternal bliss. I think he also talks about eternal damnation, but I don't have to think about that. <laughs> but that's his wager is eh, why not give it a shot? You know, what's the worst can happen? I die. I'm like, damn it. Anyway, I had used that same analogy with a trade. But I wanted to make sure and follow up on that and make sure that that one little speck of a loss, provided it is you thought it was the mother of all trades, and if you saw that trade tomorrow, you would take it again in a heartbeat. So to follow up on that, is it truly a trader's wager? Okay, because on anything less than an F yeah trade, a loss can be more than a loss. And Douglas said this once, and I don't know, I had, as I've said before, I had some cassette tapes from him going way back in the day. And I'm rereading Discipline Trader now, and I would urge you to read that. Go to www.davelandry.com. Don't know who I am tonight, slash books dash two dash read. I'll put the link in post. Some of the links need updating because Amazon changed the way to do things, but you'll get the idea. But anyway, one thing that Douglas talked about is when you have a loss on a trade, it's often not the loss in and of itself, but the loss of every trade prior. Now, what does that mean? Well, 
I gave the example before many times of uh, my youngest daughter, she wanted a dog and she got a dog. And then we ended up getting a second dog in a, during a moment of weakness. By the way, and I knew about two dog theory when we did this, but if you're living with a bunch of women, <laughs> you're the only man, you kind of cave in sometime. It is what it is. Anyway, long story endless, I know too late. We, my daughter would always forget to give the dogs water. And we were on her, on her, on her about it, on her about it, on her about it. Finally, on a Thursday night, Isabel, the dog needs water. The dogs need water. I'll do it in a little while. And Marcy says, my wife, Marcy, she says, if you don't give the dogs water tonight before you go to bed, if I come in here tomorrow when I wake up and you're at school, and these dogs do not have water, you're not going on your bus ride tomorrow. It was like a party bus or something, you know? And she forgot. And Marcy lost the cool. I kind of lost my cool too. And she didn't go to the party. She put she put us in a tough situation. Like Marcy says sometimes, parenting sucks. You know, you gotta... <laughs> but she never remembered to give the dogs water. So anyway, Marcy's reaction and my reaction to her not doing that would, from an outsider, would seem a little absurd. But the reality is, it was our reaction to everything prior to that. If you ever snapped at a loved one, have a loved one snapped at you for something that aggravates them. It's not that one little thing, it's everything that led up to that. And that's one thing that you do have to wrap your head around with the psychology of trading is sometimes a loss can be more than just that loss. 